So in another video, we looked at substance and accidents as a way of organizing being. Substance tells us what a thing is. The accidents tell us more about what kind of thing we have, but only once we know what the thing is. Once we know a thing's substance, is dog, say, it's the accidental qualities that'll allow me to tell this dog over here from that one over there. This dog is brown, that one is yellow, and so forth. So another related way to think of this is with form and matter. Now, Aristotle's fancy word for looking at things in terms of form and matter is hylomorphism. But let's keep it simple. Here, matter is just the stuff something is made of, while the, <clears throat> the form makes the matter into a recognizable thing. The form is what tells me I have a dog. The matter individuates the form. The matter is what allows me to differentiate this particular dog, my dog, as an individual, from any other dog. Now it should go without saying that the form of something is more important than what it's made up of. Before it really made sen makes sense to talk about how cute, little, or white this guy is, I have to first remember what he is, namely a dog. I have to identify his form. You should remember in the last lesson we talked about Plato's theory of forms. But here I should point out that Plato's theory and Aristotle's theory of forms are very different. One key difference is that for Plato, the form of dogness, or for that matter any form, was outside of and really above and beyond actual dogs that we see in the world. Dogs that we see imitate or participate in the ideal form of dogness, but the perfect ideal surpasses any imperfect dogs we see. Plato thought we could recognize a dog only by remembering the ideal of dogness. Not so for Aristotle. For Aristotle, the form of dog existed only in actual dogs. If there were no dogs, there would be no form of dogness. And people learned about the form of dogness not by remembering the ideal, but only by encountering real dogs in lived experience. So this is a major difference in metaphysics between Plato and his student Aristotle. Both men agreed forms were most important. But for Plato, forms belong to the immaterial, idealized world of the mind, which the material world was only a cheap and pale imitation of. For Aristotle, forms resided only in the tangible material world. To grasp the form of dog, you had to experience an instance of the real physical material dog. It was only there that the human mind could learn of the abstract and immaterial things. Let's talk more about Aristotle. Remember, he was the greatest scientist of antiquity. So classification of things into genus, species, and individual, substance and accidents, form and matter, was only a starting point to knowledge. Human beings really want to know why things are as they are. Aristotle identified four causes necessary to understand the why. First, the formal cause. Just what is it that makes something what it is and not something else? How do I know that this is a dog and not another kind of thing? That's the formal cause. Second, the material cause. What is the thing actually made of? In the case of a dog, it's fur, blood, guts, and so forth. In the case of a computer, it's microchips, circuit panels, motherboards, plastic cases, and so on. Third, the efficient cause. Who or what brought this thing about? In the case of my computer, that's sort of complicated. The parts are made by workers and machines and some factories, and then they're assembled by workers and machines and other factories. In the case of the dog, that would be the mother and the father dog. Fourth, final cause. What is something made for? For a computer, 
It's so the end user can do all the things that a computer enables her to do. For a dog, well, it's so the dog can do all the things that a dog is supposed to do. So there you have it. Matter, form, and the four causes. Let's see how much of this you remembered.